Hey everyone, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is Vinay Bhaskara and I'm one of the co-founders of CollegeVine. And in today's video, I'm going to talk to all of you about computer science and in particular, how to judge the computer science program at various colleges and our rankings for the top 15 computer science programs in the country. Now, computer science is a very popular major, whether you're just looking to make a lot of money or you're looking to reshape the world and, and dominate the world like Mark Zuckerberg or Jack over at Twitter. And so computer science has become an increasingly popular major as more and more of the economy has shifted to um, online work, right, and, and to programming and to be dominated by software. And so computer science programs around the country are getting more and more competitive and more and more colleges are actually launching these programs in response to the demand from all of you out there. So as a sort of applicant, what is your path for judging whether a computer science program is a good one? So there's a couple things you want to keep in mind with computer science programs, right? The first thing is that, um, you know, computer science is one of those majors that, you know, as long as you graduate and you do reasonably well in your internships, you're going to have a pretty solid start to your career. But I will say that oftentimes starting out in computer science can limit your upwards trajectory. So you may want to think about whether just taking computer science by itself is right for you or potentially combining it with some other discipline like economics or statistics that'll give you a little bit more flexibility. But let's actually talk a little bit more about computer science itself. What are some of the ways in which you can find out whether a college has a really, really strong computer science program, right? So there's a few factors to consider given what the job market looks like for programmers and, and, um, and sort of what you want to get out of your computer science degree. Right. So the first thing is, unless you're looking to explicitly go into academia, right, one thing you want to judge with a college is whether it has a little bit more of a practical focus within its computer science program. Now, I'm not saying that understanding the theory behind computer science, understanding sort of the theory behind networks and stuff like that isn't super valuable. It's obviously very, very important, especially when you get to higher level uh, CS work. And it's um, very sort of uh, you know, interesting, obviously, for, for a lot of folks. But you also want to make sure that you're getting some practical experience actually learning programming languages. You want to actually get programming experience because the vast majority of the jobs you'll get coming out of a computer science degree are in programming. And the more you're able to sort of learn programming, pick, pick that up quickly and display that as a skill, whether it's to your employers uh, or to, uh, you know, to via your internships or even via pro uh, projects you do on your own, right? You definitely want to make sure uh, that any program that you're considering has a really, really strong sort of practical component to it. The second piece is largely around math, right? Increasingly, the kind, the kind of work that you do as a computer um, scientist, as a programmer, right, is intertwined with math and with, in particular, data and understanding data, right? Oftentimes, it's hard for you to make good decisions as a programmer in your day-to-day -day job if you don't have at least a basic understanding of data. So you want to make sure that there's a strong statistics and data component to the program that you're pursuing, or at the very least, that you have enough flexibility with your um, you know, elective courses and with your non-major courses to be able to add in that statistics component. If you don't have a good enough background in data and statistics, you're going to be behind the curve. And so that's something you really want to make sure that you're building those skills up even as you're going into college. Right. A third piece is internships and employer relationships, right? You want to take a look at where com companies that hire lots of programmers tend to hire from, right? And, you know, obviously the, the usual suspects are going to be on there, your MITs, your UC Berkeleys, um, whomever. But you'll also notice that um, there's a lot of technical schools on that list, right? Places like the Wentworth Institute of Technology, Worcester Polytechnic Institute in Massachusetts, um, Stevens Institute of Technology in uh, New Jersey. A lot of these tech schools also get a lot of recruiting, particularly from maybe Fortune 500 companies that aren't necessarily tech companies, right? So if you're just looking to get into a, a sort of programming career, you definitely want to think about a tech school, right? Especially if you're not able to get into one of the top 10 to 15 computer science programs chances are you're going to be better off sort of going towards one of those um, going towards one of those tech schools because they actually do have a really really strong recruiting track record and that recruiting component leads into my fourth piece which is you want to look at the location of the school now one of the most underappreciated things that we see a lot of families making a mistake around is not taking location into account when choosing a college right so 
despite the fact that the world is virtual, and I think now more than ever due to the pandemic, the world is virtual, right? In normal times, and, and certainly by the time you graduate from college four to six years from now, the vast majority of hiring happens on a local level, right? So my, my favorite statistic, uh, my favorite sort of, uh, you know, statistic that, that no one quite believes is which company has the most undergrads working at the top 1,000 Silicon Valley firms? And the answer is going to surprise you because when I ask this question, most people will say, you know, you see Berkeley, MIT, Harvard, et cetera. Maybe some people will say Stanford. Um, so, uh, but the answer is actually San Jose State University. And the reason is that San Jose State is located literally right in the heart of Silicon Valley, right in downtown San Jose. And because San Jose is located right in downtown San Jose, right, its graduates and its students have a leg up in getting recruited by tech companies because even tech companies have to hire locally, right? They can't just hire from the top 10 schools in the country. Yeah, maybe Facebook can, but there's a lot more com tech companies than just Facebook in Silicon Valley, and there's a lot more tech companies, period, in the San Francisco Bay Area. So you want to also take into account location. So if a school is located in a, in a hot spot for tech, a place like Boston, New York, San Francisco, obviously, but increasingly places like Los Angeles, Dallas, Houston, Austin, Texas, Seattle, Portland. There, there's a lot of cities that are starting to build a big tech presence, Atlanta, Georgia, um, Salt Lake City, Utah. If you can go to a school that's located close by to one of these areas, you're going to have a leg up in the hiring process, right? Because there's going to be more companies out there in your surrounding area for you to find internships and job opportunities, and that's going to help you navigate the sort of hiring process and reduce your risk. And so what you'll notice is that computer science graduates from those colleges tend to do really, really well when you isolate to those uh, majors in terms of job placement and stuff like that, certainly much better than the school's you know, ranking would imply. So those are some of the factors that you should consider with a computer science major. Now let's talk about what who we at CollegeVine, based on those metrics that we talked about, as well as what student outcomes tend to look like, let's talk about who we at CollegeVine ranked as the best computer science programs in the country. So what you can see on the left of my screen, and that's actually been up on my screen the whole time, is CollegeVine's uh, school search tool. It's, it's uh, You go to collegevine.com, you click on the schools tab, you click on find schools, and you're actually able to see a bunch of you know information and data about colleges, right? I think it's one of the coolest tools out there. Um, obviously, I'm a little biased because I co-founded CollegeVine, uh, but I do think it's a really, really awesome tool that you can use in a lot of different ways. Today, we're going to be using it to look at the computer science college rankings. So... Let's take a look at the best colleges for computer science. All right. So at number one, we have Stanford, right? Um, that's not at all surprising. Stanford is obviously where a lot of Silicon Valley entrepreneurs have come from. It's where a lot of folks have um, built some of the biggest companies in the Valley. It's where a lot of you know, top tier Valley engineers come from. It's a really great school. Uh, then you have Caltech at number two, MIT at number three, Princeton at number four, Harvard at number five, Carnegie Mellon at number six, Berkeley at seven, Rice at eight, UChicago at nine, Cornell at 10, Duke at 11, Columbia at 12. Now, so far through this list, I'm sure you haven't seen any crazy outliers or anything that looks too, too different from, you know, uh, best universities for sciences in general. This is where it starts to get interesting. So Georgia Tech is actually number 13, which is much higher than where it is in the U.S. News rankings. Uh, UPenn is 14. Yale is 15. Again, nothing crazy there. UT Austin, though, is 16. And that speaks, again, to the ways in which Austin has become this technology hub. Right? Because Austin is such a powerful place to get a job via computer science, right? Via you know, in, in programming, that makes that university rank a lot higher on our list because the student outcomes are so much better than you would think. Michigan is number 17. UNC Chapel Hill is number 18, and that, again, is part of it being in the Raleigh-Durham metro area, which is another one of those emerging tech clusters. USC is 19. That's Los Angeles. Uh, Wash U St. Louis, that's you know just a, a typical prestigious university. Johns Hopkins is number 21. And remember, with Johns Hopkins, Washington, D.C. is a big area for tech employment, obviously with government contractors, defense contractors, stuff like that. Northwestern is in Chicago. Brown is pretty close to Boston. Tufts is literally in Boston. Harvey Mudd College is in Los Angeles. Dartmouth is a typical elite college. UCLA, about where it is in the national rankings. Vanderbilt, okay, Northeastern is number 30. Again, Boston area. Plus, Northeastern has the co-op program. 
um, which does a really good job of putting you into top tier college, uh, top tier employers rather with the co-op program. And so you end up with people working at places like Apple and Google and Facebook out of Northeastern when those companies don't typically recruit there except for those, um, except for with those co-op students. Um, Notre Dame is number 31. Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute is number 32. Again, one of those tech schools we talked about. Uh, Pomona is obviously a liberal arts college, but it's in LA. Emory is in uh, Emory is in sort of uh, Atlanta. But you'll notice here, UCSD is, d does really well, obviously, because it's in California. But then Virginia Tech, Penn State, San Jose State, um, those are three schools you typically wouldn't see in the top 40 of a lot of rankings. But for computer science, they rank really, really well. Uh, University of Florida, Maryland, College Park. Just trying to see if there's anything else that kind of jumps off the page here. Um, but these are our rankings. WPI, Cal Poly, right? Cal Poly is pretty close to San Francisco again. Uh, UC Irvine, UC Davis, Rose Holman Institute of Technology. So what you'll notice is that there are some key differences in how we as College Vine rank schools for computer science. So Definitely feel free to visit collegewine.com. Um, sign up for an account if you haven't already. There's a ton of great stuff that you get. I, obviously, I'm biased, but I'm, you know, I think there's a, there's a lot there, right? Um, and, and don't be biased against schools that maybe have a tech school reputation. If you're going for computer science, that that's kind of where you want to be, in fact, right? So with that, that's going to go ahead and wrap things up for our YouTube video today. Uh, before I go, I do want to mention that the vast majority of you who are watching this video right now are, are not subscribed to this channel, um, and it makes me really sad. Um, so if you get a chance, please hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, give us a like, uh, because that obviously helps us continue to, to grow and, and, and spread our advice. Um, and hit that bell icon below to get notified every time we post a new video. And we're going to be doing more cool stuff like live streams and stuff like that on YouTube. Um, so if you hit the bell icon, you'll get notified every time I or someone else from College Vine goes live. With that, that's going to wrap things up, and I'll catch you all later.